That's it. The like click off of the red line. Oh, those should just vanish after a little bit in OBS. Anyhow, it is Saturday morning. The stream beginneth. Let's set the uh, set our topic here. Uh -huh. Day six, and then not math. And then, ba, ba, ba. What else am I going to tell about this one here? Let's tell Verm Chats, just on the off chance that they care. Let's go into ye old Discordin. I'm not going to highlight everybody. This is early in the morning. Well, it's early, early in the morning. I've had a he now, how in the morning. I've had a he now, how in the morning. I'm pretty happy I uh, built a, um, well, I, I'll talk about it later, but I built a new thing for my for the effects pedals that I use specifically for vocals. So they're all consolidated into one discrete stand now. So hopefully that'll be good. I should find like an IRC channel for like writing or more likely like found an IRC channel for writing and projects and stuff. All right, I see chats coming true here. Oh, Lord. Uh, oh, it's big Brongulus. All right. Well, Brongulus, you're tearing it up uh, with 16 edits so far. You seem like a shoe in to win because we only have a couple more days of this here. So unlike previous floundering days, I knew I was going to be tired this morning. So I went through and read both of the chapters that we might potentially work on this morning. Uh, I am, uh, and I only got about four hours of very fractured sleep. So here's your chance to pick up on many, many, many errors. Uh, so everybody wanting to get in there, it is conceivable I will make 20 or 30 errors uh, along this way. Okay, so we're at page 44. Um, if you are just tabbing to the stream from nowhere, I edit all of my stories and novels and everything live uh, on Twitch and YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and wherever, whatever uh, Nazi site you found this on, it's there. So Balder Dashley had enough sleep for both of us, but I still feel half asleep. God, I wish I could just buy sleep. Oh, like if I could, oh, what a product that would be. If you could just pay for like eight hours uninterrupted of sleep, I think I would pay like $150 once a week just to get eight hours of solid, like black hole, no dream sleep. It could even be like crazy dreams. Just, I just want to sleep. So I've, I'm still waiting for insurance to improve my Epstein, improve, approve my Epstein machine to where I might get like a restful night's sleep, but it's taking forever, man. Just insurance, health insurance, the way that it is in the United States should not exist. Everybody involved with the process is a parasite. I'm just, just putting it out there. Uh, I've argued that before on many platforms. It just shouldn't exist, you know. Um, a, lot of, a lot of situations like that. Um, the idea of insurance buffering against um, catastrophe and so forth could, could definitely be. Yeah, his copay for that CT scan last week was over $500. They went to my copay to be like $5,000 when I had to get two CT scans to see if I had brain cancer or not. $5,000. But the nice thing about medical bills is you just don't pay them. They, they send you letters for a little bit, and you're like, fuck off. And that's it. <laughs> that's how it works in America. They can't uh, take your house. They can't uh, put a lien on you. They're just counting on you to pay. And don't pay. The end. <laughs> More financial advice from uh, Senor ZYZ. No, I, I, I think I, it's, it's screwed up. Like, even if you have an okay job, your health insurance is probably shit in the United States. And you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember where, um, for a long time, uh, this is like before the pandemic, I want to say even. Uh, who was I dating then? I just date uh, all the, I, uh, I gauge all the errors of my life by who I was dating there. And at, uh, at the time, it was a Chinese girl who found out about my uh, other radio show. And she, was, she stayed up all night watching all the episodes, getting more and more furious, and then just wanted to argue with me about it. But you can't argue with me about it. It's, it's just a stupid show. Um, I do it for a joke. I've done it for 20 years. I'm never going to stop. And uh, she was just very, very woke. And I'm, I'm more, I guess I'm, I'm woke in some ways. You know, I would like for everybody to have healthcare and um, everybody to have access to college and food and housing and all that. 
I think it'd be decent to set up those programs. But I also think you should have a license to have children. Um, you should be part of a militia to own a gun. Uh, and enfranchisement should be contingent on um, a series, uh, essentially like a four to eight year period of civil service or some kind of nation building or empire building or conquest of the savage South or something. But anyhow, um, so it turned out that um, though there are areas of my brain that are shinier than it should be, uh, what I thought was uh, glioblastoma, which would have been bad, um, was just completely lack of sleep. Um, this was the beginning of my uh, massive sleep problem. And I'm just now getting diagnosed with apnea and trying to do something about it. So it's been like two or three years. But yeah, like uh, I, apparently I have the apnea that you will just straight up die for no reason in the dead of the night. So they're like, yeah, we might want to do something about this. Um, so you're know, trying to lose some weight. We'll see how that goes and uh, trying to get it together there. But I can already tell that I'm uh, more scatterbrained than I normally. That's the apnea that you have. Yeah, I'm not as bad. I thought I had it pretty bad because I wake up like 14 times an hour, like 14 to 30. And uh, I talked to this other dude who was like a much bigger dude than me. And he's like, yo, I'm waking up like 60 to 80 times an hour. 70 events per hour without the CPAP. Yeah, that's where he's at right there. Um, I'm sure if I got put on some like significant weight, I would get up in there. Oh, what's up, Cord? But, um, anyhow, it's Saturday morning. And, um, you know, honestly, this is like my, one of my favorite things to do is to work on these stories. Oh, you need coffee? I got it right here. Yeah, I brew my own. I got one of them drip towers. Don't get those. They're, they're fancy. But, uh, oh, sorry to hear that. I can relate. Yeah, I think everybody on the stream has significant difficulty sleeping because we sit in front of a computer all day instead of exercising and killing wildebeest or whatever God intended us to do. So um, we got some new people here. I'm going to recap what has happened in the story thus far, and then we're going to begin editing. First, gaze upon this right here. If you make a suggestion for this story, and I like it, and I implement it into the show, let's give Choose Knowledge a color here. Choose Knowledge, such wow strikes me as a lavender type chatter and then captain ron is going to be this electric blue all right there we go and then steven's stuff is white because i don't know who he is there uh no problem sleeping usually just so many dreams oh i would love to get in on that um yeah i was talking to other people that do the kind of work that i do and they were all sharing notes that like they would wake up in the morning with like a solution to a problem but they didn't have any dreams that they could remember. And like, I'm pretty much the same. I can only remember a dream maybe once a week or so. And uh, I'm, I'm part of the era of people where the majority of our dreams are in black and white because we drew up, grew up um, seeing like black and white television, which is, I don't know why that happened, but uh, that definitely happened to us. And, uh, <laughs> well, sometimes I get like full color um, craziness. <sighs> It's a pain. All right, so anyhow, here's how this works. We're going to read each line of the story. I'm going to give points for useful suggestions, grammar corrections, um, instances of nude photos of me found buried in the text that we need to omit. Um, and then at the end of this, I will put everybody who gets a point into the acknowledgments page of this book. Um, I've done this many a time, but right here, this is the last book. All one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten people um, contributed to that edit. And uh, Big Brongulus uh, was a fact checker for it, but he did not get credited. So I'll have to say that eternally right there. But yeah, we'll put your name in the book. Um, this is going to be put out as a little pamphlet. It is my goal to show also the process of typesetting this one and the process of designing a cover uh, for this one. It's going to be a little slim volume about the size of this Clark's World right here, uh, which I no longer subscribe to because they went too woke. Man, just all their stories are fucking Chinese people writing about their mothers. You know, I, I can only I can only stomach so much like solar punk, whatever. I just want to read about spaceships and action and adventure and weird robots and uh, different states of matter and very questionable sexual scenes. That's what I want in my science fiction magazines. They do not give it to me any longer. So I am not uh, presently a subscriber. I might find an episode that brings me around, but I'm happy they exist. I'm happy that there is a quality magazine put out by Neil Clark, who I know IRL, and uh, who is <laughs> a difficult character. Uh, he's, he's an interesting guy. So Neil Clark, um, 
actually has like a robotic heart. Um, he had like a he has an artificial heart, and um, he just has like sunken eyes, and he's stressed out all the time. Um, but he is single handedly like putting out the probably the premier magazine, um, in science fiction for a long time there. So shout out to them. He's you constantly hear about his struggles with it. It is a labor of love. Ah. <sighs> And I'm just mad because they won't buy any of my fucking stories. Um, but you will see why shortly. All right, let's get into it. So here's a story. Uh, this is a story about bounty hunters seeking a legendary figure called Three Wolf. Uh, they arrive at Skywork Keep and uh, meet Old Man Moraney, the Lord of Adder, of Lord of Skywork Keep, um, who is a just crotchety old man. He's rude to them. He doesn't let them inside of the keep, and he says he thinks that they will probably get murked by this Three Wolf. So they're turned away without supper. Um, as they roll down the hill, uh, they are indeed ambushed by Three Wolf, um, who decides not to slay them right away, but tries to scare them away uh, by summoning up a giant murder of crows that descends upon the camp and just pecks them to pieces. So uh, the next morning, instead of dispersing, uh, they instead are resolved to go further. Uh, they go into town uh, in search of Three Wolf, Meanwhile, there's an interlude where we see Three Wolf conversing with Lilene, uh, the proprietress of the Heaven's Hearth Inn, and uh, basically asking her to poison all these guys, to sicken them and drive them away. She refuses, uh, but agrees to try and waylay them to the west. Uh, and then we see Flinzer and Lilene get into a, uh, uh, a very heartwarming relationship, uh, like just like a one-night stand type thing. And uh, she begs him not to go after Three Wolf and says, hey, stay here for the winter with me. Instead, he refuses. He has a duty to the six men that he is leading. Flinzer is the um, uh, sort of the protagonist of the story. And they go after Three Wolf instead. Uh, so the last chapter that we read was them uh, stumbling into a clearing after two days of trying to find Three Wolf and his uh, legendary wolves, finding absolutely no track, no trail, nothing of him. And finally, they find a clearing where seven skulls have been pinned to the trees, uh, made to look like them. So it's three wolves sending them a message, hey, I'm going to murder all of you if you persist in your tracking. And this just makes the bounty hunters matter and matter. Um, so uh, we are now at chapter seven and at uh, <laughs> Bongulus. Is that what we're calling him now? Good Lord. You know, this is this right here, what you're seeing on the screen, is why I don't smoke uh, marijuana regularly. Like, one, um, it just robs you of all your ambition. But two, uh, it makes you so foggy that you can't write and edit and so forth. Like, um, And drinking is kind of the same. I try to uh, cut down on the drinking a bit. But yeah, man, like the, the more drugs up in your dome, the worse the writing gets in my experience. And we're trying to write a very autistic kind of wordplay, whatever. Uh, why is Three Wolves being so coy about just killing them dead directly? Well, we developed that a little bit throughout the story. Um, he initially is just planning to kill them, but some stroke of luck, they set up their camp just shy of where he has his ambush set up, right? And there's seven of them, and seven is like a little too much for him to take on single-handedly. Uh, I disagree, Topa. I don't know of anybody that writes better on marijuana. I know of people who come up with some fun ideas but that then need to be written in like a sober state. Uh, I do not, there's not a lot of good writing that has come on weed. Most of the time when you see a manuscript, and it's like, yeah, I was, I was toasted on weed the whole time I was writing this. Was somebody saying that? What you are really seeing is some heroic heavy lifting by an editor to take that disorganized and foggy mess and turn it into something useful. And this, is, this holds true for like all the Ken Kesey stuff, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, he was just blasted on acid writing in a hospital. That's great, but an editor had to go in there and essentially rewrite his entire book for it to be, <laughs> I don't know, uh, who is it? Milkness is about to get her medical marijuana card, I guess. I don't know if they even have that in uh, New Zealand. Uh, but in any case, so Three Wolf, you can just see that he is just worn down. Um, at this point, he just every season, he has to wipe out um, a troop or two of bounty hunters, sometimes some single heroes and so forth, and he's just sick of it. Additionally, um, there is something special about Flinzer where he just um, has kind of um, a second sense that saves his life over and over and over again. And we get a little bit into um, how it's unwise to trifle with an old man who is alive 
in uh, occupations where men usually die young. So Flinzer is one of those people. Um, he's not inept in any way, shape, or form, though he's out of his element here. Um, and his greatest strength, oh, it's big Jira up in here. Hell yeah. Um, so anyhow, that's, that's what we're getting to there. Um, ultimately, we find that the, the conflict between Three Wolf and Moraney is just Three Wolf would like to put an end to it. Um, my winter leave has to be taken in June, and while I'm not working, I can enjoy a little marijuana without breaking my contract or being in peril of randomly. T- it's so absurd that people can't do what they want. And like the idea that you can randomly drug test somebody um, because they work for you, I just, you know, call me a libertarian. I mean, I guess, I guess if you operate heavy machinery, right? Or if you work in a factory line, which I think is, I think is the job that you do. You work in some kind of factory or assembly line. I, I could see it, but I, I do not like the lack of autonomy um, where, where somebody can just say, hey, piss in this cup, right? Like, how about I piss in your mouth? How about that? Tree stand is two words, uh, according to Jira. Damn, but we haven't even read that yet. I can't give you a point for that. You jump in the gun. Um, I'll give him a point anyway. Yeah, heavy industry. Uh, do you work in like a mine or something? Good lord. All right, I'm gonna give you a point. What color do you want, Jira? I'm gonna make you. I shouldn't have even asked you what you want because I'm just gonna do what I want. Let's see. Let's make you a delicate pink. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I had to race ahead. All right, so I think we justified our position and uh, rambled enough for today. So in this next chapter that's coming up, we switch back to the Three Wolf POV. And one thing that we want to think, oh, uh, working on Sam, Manly Sam, I'm Sam, Sam, Sam would be good right about now. See, I want all the things I can't have, like bagels and lox and sushi and all that. But I, I, I do only get to have one cheat meal a week, and I already had it. And we just had to get ramen the other day. It was it was critical. All right, so I looked a little into here. Um, so one of the things that I want to think about is uh, as I'm reading through this, I will tell you that from my perspective, so far, the three wolf chapters are a little weaker than the Flinzer chapters. Right? This is a split POV book where our point of view is either Flinzer or it's three wolf. And in both cases, we shade a little into the third person omniscient, right? It's not a um, uh, it's not a first person type thing, and it's not a limited view, but it's mostly limited, right? Um, so, um, so I'm just aware of this that um, three wolf chapters are kind of necessary exposition to get get what's happening here, um, but I would like to think about ways that we can shape them up specifically um, chapter. Th- Three, which I think is um, particularly weak and which I believe I will try to rewrite at the end of this. Um, again, as we're going through this, I am looking for opportunities where I could expound for about a chapter, uh, like three or four pages about a particular thing. And now that might be a prologue where I try to build some um, suspense and tension at the beginning of it, because I think, um, I think we don't have that. But as you're listening, if you're listening, Try to look for places where you're like, I wish you went more into detail about that. Like, I wish you had more words. Because I would like to hit a word count of uh, 1750, and then this is eligible to enter a contest. <coughs> but I also don't have to do I've got other novellas that I could send into that stupid contest. So, All right. Chapter 7. They were fools, indifferent to well-intentioned intimidation. The men below were indifferent to well-intentioned intimidation and utterly unaware that... Oh, this is, this is not good. You don't even need that. They were fools. High above the seven hunters, Rodef perched in a concealed tree stand and listened to the voice... Um, they were fools. High above the seven hunters, Rodef perched in a concealed tree stand. He listened to the voices of the men who meant to behead him for the first time. Skulls were a touch too much, Rodef rude. 
For naught, he logged the... Oh, Lord. For naught, he lugged the horrid haversack of sun-bleached skulls. Uh, I don't like for naught there. Uh, it sounds like it'll be the first time he'll be beheaded. I, I, I assume that this is the first time. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, that's a good edit. Mm. Let me see. Misplaced modifier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Milkness is getting that one there. <coughs> Boom. I like the men who meant to behead him. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Uh, no, I don't think in simmering silence is good either. That's better. That's much better. Much clearer, too. Cool. They were fools. High above the seven hunters, Rodef perched in a concealed tree stand. Uh, I don't like perch um, here either. Uh, let's see. High above the seven hunters, Rodef scowled down from a tree stand's concealment. <laughs> well, we could say leafy concealment. Scowled down through the leaves. For the first time, that was much, much better. Although we have to be careful that, like, um, when I'm in, like, a uh, had no sleep and no patience for this kind of bullshit, we have to be careful that I don't strip out um, some of the frippery that the story is meant to contain. Because uh, I'm, I'm just kind of in, like, a no bullshit mood today. Um, so I don't want to remove um, the parts of the story that may be charming. Because uh, we have one chapter that's just written, like, a science fiction novel, like, he went to the reactor. The reactor was glowing. So was he, glowing with love for the reactor. He began to tenderly stroke the control rod. You know, it, it, like this, that kind of um, style is not what we're going for here. So, <laughs> shout out to Milkness is so happy that she beat uh, Rongulus to the punch. Absolutely misplaced modifier, though. I'm so good at it. They were fools. High above the seven hunters, Rodef scowled down through the leaves. For the first time, he could hear the voices of the men who meant to behead him. I like that much better. This is a stronger chapter. Skulls were a touch too much, Rodef rude. Um. He 
He'd lug the horrid havers. Mm -hmm. Are the people you submit the story to um, aware that you are deliberately incorporating the charming alliteration. I like, I like the scare quotes around charming. Thank you very much, Milkness. Um, really, really makes me feel good about what we're trying to do here. Um, yes, it should be, it's established within the first couple of pages of the story that is not meant to be a serious tale. Um, as it stands, like it's something to keep in mind if we're writing like a dramatic prologue or whatever. Um, the humorous tone of this piece is immediately apparent in my belief, uh, right? But, um, but yeah, like I was just saying, I just, um, the other day, I read a few lines of a, um, you, you, were, you were misquoting me. Like, I didn't say it sarcastically. I actually think that some of these lines are charming. God. <laughs> All right, lady. I see how it is. Um, Yeah, oh, this, is, this is a hard sentence to fix. I thought the sarcasm was nicely muffled. Well, why don't you write a uh, a uh, story that is uh, just nothing but puns? <laughs> puns and alliteration. So you try to make it work. Lord. Mm.
Okay, cool. Now I'm fretting that I didn't know. I'm just, uh, I'm mostly feigning. Um, yeah, yeah, like I'm, it's mostly uh, just feigning outrage uh, so that you'll be nicer to me. This is a trick that uh, old men do to young women. Although, not so young anymore. Am I right? Oh, damn. Um, anyhow. <laughs> No, I, I'm fully aware uh, that this is preposterous. And like I've said many times, this is not the right way to write, but it is something that I want to do. Um, this is not something that I'm writing for commercial success, but just because um, I got bored of writing stories in the regular way. Um, uh, shortly after, like after we finished Zeros, I want to say, I just gave myself like a whole year where I could write like any flowery, stupid thing. Where Because um, up until that point, Everything that I was writing was in like this very terse um, for publication uh, language, and I wasn't successful with it. Um, so eventually, I just wanted to like let down my hair and just write stuff that's stupid. That's just for me, really, um, and get back to the joy of just putting goofy shit on the page and uh, writing characters that are um, more in tune with what I want to see. And then um, I think after I'm, I'm like starting to get to the end of it. Um, you have, uh, actually have, yes, I do have extremely high expectations for the reader, but also, um, over dialogue. Um, we could, uh, opportunity to up the word count by filling it in for people. Well, we get like about seven words there. Uh, so as I was writing the sign, the line, I actually did consider, um, and, um, like shooting up the, uh, what were they, birch? No, oh, I, I had something for this. It was like a, not an osseous decent. <laughs> Um, monitorial. I think I did something originally in the first draft. I had something like uh, ominous, ob obvious, um, knuckle down, and yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, what's well, like a a threatening token that you could leave uh, somewhere? I know that there's a word for this. Um, Especially if we got something that rhymed with like the crude threat flop. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this to Bradius right here. Um so keep in mind too that we the reader does know that he has done this. Um be taboo. Oh, uh like yeah, it's kinda like taboo. Um this is not a taboo, but it's it's close to the meaning of taboo. Um we what we want is like an article that is uh, yeah, see, so you can see taboo there. Beyond the pale, something not allowed, forbidden. Um, hmm. Yeah. Tsunami stones. Um, interpretation of signs. Warning signs for collapse of ancient population. Ooh, tomb warnings. Uh, gave distance member and hazard warnings uh, from Greek tsunami. Well, that's kind of cool, where people put up a bunch of uh, rocks. Well, we can't use Polynesian here. Like, it, like the, One, it's like a northern story, and um, uh, but Tarpu. <laughs> okay. I like the uh, tsunami stones. 
Let me see. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's look at hat. In hopes the manhunters might see the light, Three Wolf lugged the horrid haversack of sun bleached skulls down the mountain. Oh, this is terrible. This is not better. Um. Mm hmm. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Oh, well, it's because, so, um, what's happening here? The reason why he thinks it's a touch too much is below the men are like scoffing at his, uh, his like a uh, warning sign. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I like this a little bit better. Uh, I missed the previous stuff. Yeah, 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 that's that's why that's going on. Now you got to read up on all the chapters there before you do uh, you do the. Um, uh, although it's good to question some of this stuff anyway, because uh, it's leading me to rearrange uh, the way that this is going. I kind of want to make like a bony shadow. Um, let's see. Mm. 
her image. This is what we want. Let's get a little into this uh, adumbration. Let's see. <laughs> we could do Aussie as likeness. No. It seemed like a good idea at the time. The Manhunters would have... Um, oh, we're getting so far afield here. I did not expect to uh, struggle so much with this uh, this paragraph. But we always do... Like, if you've ever... If you've done editing streams before, the um, the night after the show, it was always murder. Because I spend so much mana on the show, and then I never sleep well. So <laughs> it's always like this. Um, but I think we still get good work. And it's just important... To me, like if I want to do anything in my life, I have to do it every day, whether it's hard or not. Because like any any break in it, and I just I just fall to fucking pieces. Um, so I just I have to do this every day. Um, if I want to get through it, and if you have a goal that you really want and you can do it every day, like probably should. Let me see here. I don't like the, it seemed like a good idea. Okay, I like that a little bit better. Um, <laughs> oh, none of that is uh, super, um, super, yeah, well, hold on. Let me just work on this paragraph before I look at that. It's not there. Like right now, we're focusing on the language 
here and trying to get like the point across and then we can examine um, the essential reality of the uh, situation. Okay. I like that a little bit better. Instead, they talked up his marksmanship, but completely missed the target. And then we, we need the comma. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we don't need a comma there. <laughs> That's not good. Okay, so let's do that. We we mention it because we need the haversack. It's a plot point. Um, let me see. Let me see. Okay. I don't like that. How could they not see? Okay, so we put the through. Yeah, I don't. No, I don't like that. Okay, cool. Okay, ignorant tenacity. Uh, a little too much. Um, let me see. I do like the idea. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Flop as transitive. Let's see. I think we're going to take out flop. Um, oh, yeah, we're taking that out. Yeah, so. I think we're just mired in the whatever. I'm going to give both of you points for effort here, even though this is slow and unsteady going right here. Let's let's look for caveat, counsel, forewarning, injunction, munition. I want something that's closer to omen. Um, like four toking. Uh, yeah, I I want a word that's like a oh. Perfect. <laughs> I like that. Ooh, oh yeah, oh that's going in. Oh, we can't call them scrawny necks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he'd heave the horrid haversack of sun-bleached skulls halfway down the mountain for nothing. If anything, he'd bolstered their resolve. I like the harbinger. All right, Bradius, thank you for pumping up the alliteration. <laughs> I think I had to heave in one of the initial drafts, so... Oh, God. However, his harbinger missed the mark. He'd heave that... <laughs> I like that a little bit. No, uh, however, is not good.
Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Much neater with just miss the mark. Okay. Uh, I don't know what portion you're talking about there. Um, please clarify. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah, I do like that better. Yeah, it's a little because it's, it's all of this is pretty convoluted to tell you the truth. Um, so, yeah, that is an improvement. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, and so I think we'll have um, the. All right, let's let's see what we've done here in the hour of time we've spent on this paragraph. <laughs> Is it actually an hour now? It's like thirty minutes. They were fools. I don't like how could they not see um let's see the whole chapter is internal dialogue um so we only italicize uh, direct quotes um basically so skulls were a touch too much is a direct mental quote so that's italicized um i don't like how could they not see Oh, I like that. The bounty men were oblivious. <laughs> I like that. The bounty men were insufferably oblivious. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, there we go. High above the seven hunters, three wolves scowled down through the leaves. For the first time, he could hear the voices of the men who meant to behead him. They were unimpressed by his crude threat. Um, I wonder if there's like a, a way that I can... Um... <laughs> I 
<laughs> I guess it's spooky. Ghastly, gruesome. <sighs> the skulls were a touch too much, Rodef rude. It should have worked. Confronted by their dead predecessors, the bounty men should have seen the light and taken flight. Instead, his harbinger missed the mark and seemed to actually increase their resolve. <laughs> um... Seemed to even. Instead, his harbinger re missed the mark, and incredibly. Mm-hmm. Not intensify, yeah. <laughs> so what he what he's doing here is he has an It's it's a, like an inept attempt at intimidation. It's like he's he's rolling a critical fail on his intimidation. Um, no, I don't think that we're rolling a critical fail. Um, I think we're doing some necessary and difficult work on uh, the start of a chapter that didn't uh, well express what we wanted to do. Uh, <laughs> I like that both of y'all are tired. I got like three hours of sleep. Uh, I'm still going it. All right. Well, think on it, Brongulus. You may, the solution may come to you behind a veil of smoke. Yeah, we, I don't think we need to um, have the... Let's just take that out. It should have worked. Confronted by their dead predecessors, the bounty men should have seen the light and taken flight. Instead, his harbinger missed the mark. He'd heaved that horrid haversack of sun-bleached skulls down the mountain for nothing. What a waste of effort and arrows. Instead of showing off, he should have simply shot one of them. Instead of showing off, he should have simply... Instead of showing off, Three Wolf should have simply shot them. It was still an option. He unslung his blow and knocked an arrow. 
The witch. Who should fall? The graybeard was the obvious choice. Flinzer had his back to Rodef. He wouldn't know what hit him until the arrow was through his throat. Without him, comma, Nice. I'm here, though. Uh, I wish to edit with my glorious leader. Yeah, we're, I don't know if there's anything glorious about me or that I am any sort of uh, leader. I'm more of a, a profiteer exploiting your labor for free, right? This is, this is just capitalism in action. Uh, I'm like a aristocrat of intellectual effort, um, just hoovering up on... <laughs> I hope, hopefully people get something out of this, and it's kind of fun, because I do enjoy the process there, but it's like the nerdiest thing ever. And if we're being fair, uh, I'm not getting money, I'm losing it. Like, all all of this is, you know, I could have been, the entire time that I was writing, I could have been working at McDonald's, and I would have a Dodge Charger to show for it at this point. <laughs> Instead, I'm like, uh, 150 grand in the hole? Jesus. I could have gotten a um, a women's studies degree with that and at least gotten like some sympathy cunny from dog face women, but not happening. No, women's studies is very important. I studied a lot of women. Um, anyhow. <laughs> the Greybeard was... I wonder if Greybeard should be capitalized here. Um, the Greybeard was the obvious choice. Flinzer had his back to Rodef. He wouldn't know what hit him until the arrow was through. And I wonder if there's a comma there. The gray beard was the obvious choice. See, this is what we need Brongulus for, because he knows where the commas should be. Hopefully, in this sentence. Flinzer had his back to Rodef and wouldn't know what hit him, comma, until the arrow was through his throat. Without him, the others would be lost. Rodef wet a finger to the wind. Slay one, save six. Simple enough. But as Three Wolf drew a bead... But as Three Wolf drew a bead, Flinzer scratched the back of his neck. Rodef hesitated and recalled the fey moment in the foothills. Rodef recalled the fey moment in the foothills. The man had the knack. It was never wise to try an old man who remained in a young man's game. Excuses. All right, there we go. So Three Wolf isn't a bad guy, uh, really, if he's thinking this way. Um, he's a self-interested guy, uh, right? He um, very much wants to be left alone and is willing to um, murder hundreds. Well, not murder, but he's willing to just wipe out literally hundreds so far of men to do this. Um, his morality structure is not in line uh, with like a traditional like agrarian uh, morality structure. This is like a very old being um, who does see value in like human beings, but he sees like an equivalent amount of value um, with these men and like some deer, right? He, uh, <laughs> you know, if it's necessary to wipe them out, he will do it. I would, I would put his morality at like a true neutral uh, type situation there where um, he's meant to kind of be at one with the forest and his surroundings and all that. Um, but you can see here, like, some elements of humanity peeking in. Excuses, he scolded himself. The fact was, Three Wolf did not want to shoot Flinzer. There was something to the man. Flinzer faced the myriad...
Flinzer faced his follies with a sanguine shrug. In spite of his sorry plight, he had a hint of humor about himself. Rodef had watched... All right, let me see there. Who wants him dead? Uh, so in half an hour, I'll be going to bed. Okay, cool. Well, let's try to make uh, good use of that time. Uh, and then who wants him dead? He is uh, hunted by Marco Marini of Skywork Keep. Uh, it's like an old man who has like a long-standing grudge. Apparently, this has been going on for like a decade between the two of them. Every year, Marini sends out a bunch of waybills all over the realm um, asking people to murder this guy. It's kind of like... Marini is just posting his docs all over every IRC channel and offering a Bitcoin reward if they'll merc him. So you can see where the inspiration for this goes. <laughs> uh, we should not translate everything, all morality to IRC. But um... <laughs> the fact was, Three Wolf did not want... In all honesty, he didn't actually want to take the shot. There was something to the man. Flinzer faced his follies with a sanguine shrug. In spite of his sorry plight, he had a hint of humor about himself. Oh, no, this is not good. Uh, I hope... Oh, uh, what's his... Uh, Harjam... Harjamano. Uh, good time zone. You must be in India. Uh, although I don't know where Harjamano... Where... I'm trying to put together where that... Seems like I can't I can't place it. I would just insult you by guessing. I hope Flinzer and Three Wolf team up and go Merc Moraney. How are they gonna do that? He's in a keep. Man, maybe I should have written it that way. Um <laughs>
uh, I should totally have written it this way. Now, uh, moist uh, undies unite. No, we're going to be going for another two or three hours, probably. Um, as long as I don't run out of coffee here. So, uh, rewrite stream. We're not, yeah, we're kind of rewrite. I'm not going to, no, we're not going to have grappling hooks or whatever. That's That ending is like way too fucking obvious um, to go here. You know, give me a little more credit than that. Okay, cool. That is an obvious... It's like the immediate place that your mind would go. You know? Like, the, the like in any point where you have two characters, um, they're like a hunter and hunted, where you don't want, like, one of them to, like, obviously win or whatever. Like, the, the classic TV trope is to just have them go against a third party. Um, uh, kind of... It kind of is, and it's where the narrative imperative feels like it's going. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely fucking obvious. I would never do something so base. Uh, but it depends. Like, how much does a, if, if the reader really wants that, um, you could then, like, flip it on them and have a uh, fucking, like, Three Wolf and Moraney could team up. Any kind of terrible thing could go on here. It could be the, the murder of crows is the ultimate victor of this, and they just peck apart everybody at the end. Um, we'll have to see. You won't know until you read the whole story, and you won't see the whole story until we've edited it. So you have to keep going. Uh... What's the word for releasing tension on a screen? Um, yeah. Okay, let down. Okay, cool. Uh, relaxed, yeah. No, no. There, there. It's like there is that specific term, um, and I've done some archery, so I, I knew it existed. Three wolf let down his shot. There was, and I also like let down there because, like, oh, you're not gonna fucking put an arrow through his float. In spite of his plight, the ringleader stayed sanguine.
Um, oh yeah, there's so many. Like keep up any any like act that we've done since like the dawn of time, like fishing, hunting, um, fucking. Uh, you know, like any of the 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 things that have always been with us. You will find like an incredible glossary of specific terms in almost every language. Um, not a fan of uncommon grit. Yeah, let's let's see if that. Um, Let's see. Arrow to the knee time. I think that might happen at some point. Okay, cool. Um, have you ever heard someone explain anal sex as gritty or gurdy? Because you, you look like you went to some effort. Uh, I have heard it described as gritty, girthy, gruesome, uh, grotesque, gaping. A lot of G words in getting buggered. Uh, and even buggery has two Gs, so think about it. When, the next time you hear somebody say, G's up, hose down, what are they really talking about? Hmm? Okay, let's go back to that. Okay. Uh, yeah, there we go. When his met, oh, exactly. I'm giving you the point for it, Brongulus, because you, even though I didn't say it, you drew my attention to that one there. Up, oh, up into, up into Bente. Really getting some stuff in there. Three Wolf let down his shot. There was something sad and endearing about Flinzer. In spite of the many misfortunes along the way, he stayed sanguine. When his men fell to pieces, when his men fell to pieces, Flinzer deftly wove them back together. Rodef was loath to unceremoniously snipe such a man. Okay, so here I'm really liking this because we're building in an expectation of this action movie showdown, right? Man to man, sword to sword, right? So even as the reader is starting to realize like, oh, they could team up and take on Marini together, right? Um, we start to build towards 
uh, this showdown with this premonition. Mm, what's that? Is there a word that just means for stupid? Uh, I think winced is too much. Uh, yes, and we already know that Flinzer is really good at single combat sword bite from the puritanical section earlier, which we didn't have before, right? So it's important that Flinzer, because this really is like they are just going into the woods where they don't belong and eating shit nonstop. So that section where we... Um, Uh, comma splice deeds of show. You are right, but we're uh, in the middle of. Uh, we'll give it. I'll give it to you anyways because you're right. But I'm in the middle of rewriting that one. Um, but yeah, that should be two separate sentences. So instead of wince, um, is there a word for? Mm -hmm. Okay, so stupid ideas or behavior. So there's folly, there's idiocy, there's stupidity. Uh, um, Three Wolf winced at the idiocy. No, nah, it doesn't quite work. Three Wolf shook his head in self-reproach. Uh, uh, somebody wouldn't actually do that, but that's what that's what we want to say. We want to say, um, and like he's like, ah, oh, the idiot. Um, no, it's not simple. Um, it's very complicated. All right, there we go. Um, so chided is a good word, um, but chided um, has with it the connotation that, um, and I don't like wince there. Um, let's see, what else can we get? Cringe is too much. Uh, blench is too much. Uh, I like that a little bit better. Three Wolf grimaced in reproach. There were no bards in these trees. A showdown would go unsung. The wisest move was to put an arrow through Flinzer, but he could not find the will. Um, I think he scowls earlier, right? That's, uh, yeah, he's scowling down through the trees. Um, yeah, so we can't, you can't scowl all chapter long. Um, it is a good thought, but I'm I'm okay with Grimace. I like this one though. Yeah, yeah. Um also the wisest move was to put an arrow through Flinzer, but he could not find the will. 
With a sigh, he turned his sights to the grouser. Cocker's voice grated from fifty yards away. His gestures were grandiose as he badmouthed. <laughs> his gestures were grandiose as he badmouthed Rodef's bowmanship. There was every reason to shoot him, but Rodef realized if the complainer was slain, morale might improve. Better to let him gripe on. Okay, cool. Three Wolf picked up. Three Wolf picked out shots on the other five men. The axe man was out. The brute was a bit too big to reliably stop with a single shot. Likewise, the one with the impressive scars round his neck. Likewise, the one with the impressive scars is seen suffering and then some. This is stripes. Um, <laughs> I love bad mouse the bowmanship, then suddenly wears an arrow for a necktie. That would be like the spot where we could um, turn Cocker into like the Jesse Ventura of the Predator here. Um, this could just be like a Predator stalking narrative. And we'll note also that we are losing words rather than gaining them, which is... Uh, <laughs> No problem. Likewise, the one with impressive scars had seen suffering and then some. He might shrug off a shaft or two. The moonlight lovers were out. Take one and the other would vow revenge. Shoot one and the other would vow revenge. The last option was Went. The quiet man with the bruised eye and ego was as close as the counter... Okay, cool. Uh-oh. Sounds like Went is going to go. And then some... Uh, let's take a look. Cool. Boom. 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 Da -da 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 -da. The Moonlight Lovers were out. Shoot one and the other would vow revenge. So this is just like a very... Uh, is the only place in the story that we're going to reference that... Um, uh, Ives and Ames might be more than friends. So um, uh, we'll see what happens to Went. The last option was Went. The little man with his bruised eye and ego was as close as the hunters could claim to a woodsman. He was nothing to boast about. He was still nothing to boast about. Not once had he found a trace Rodef hadn't meant for him to find. The ranger couldn't bring himself to... So if you look at this sentence, there's a lot of like double negatives here. Um, it would be great to clean this up a little bit if we could. So far, he hadn't found a single trace Three Wolf hadn't meant for him to find. So far, he'd only found the traces Three Wolf intended for him to find. That's a little better. Uh, you say that, but it's perfectly clear and clean? Actually, let me go back on that. 
Because this, um, not once that he found a trace Three Wolf hadn't meant for him to find. Okay. I like that language better. It's clearer, I think, the second way that we had it. But um, even though we have like a double negative here in the sentence, which I would generally say to avoid, um, given that the character is just ruminating, who should I shoot? Who shouldn't I shoot? Like when you're doing that, you're like these, these double negatives and stuff start to like cluster your mind. So it fits a little bit to me with the frame of mind of the character. Um, all right, I'm going to give you, because uh, I actually like this way better. So I'm going to, uh-oh, 23. Bad luck, man. You better get some more points. <clears throat> I like the use of useful idiot here too. <coughs> What's the there's like a Russian word for useful idiot that I want to think about. Uh uh Pulzny Direk right there. <coughs> Where did a uh, useful idiot come from? Pulzny Direk um a Soviet term that uh, has long since uh, slipped into the, the yeah, Polesny Direk. All right, let's. We can't use it, obviously. Like, uh... Polesny Direk. Okay, this is. Direct Polesny, chief. <laughs> somebody, Direct Polesny, chief information officer. Wait, hold on. Undisclosed. Oh man, oh that's wild. All right, so that won't fucking load here. Infosec punks. Um, all right, here. Let's hear how this is pronounced. Polesny Durek. I like it. Yeah, it's, it's a useful, um, I like that the CEO is just named Useful Idiot. They mean to kill you, Rodef reminded himself. Still, the anger would not kindle. He put his arrow away. The false trail failed to entice the bounty hunters, and Wentz shouted in the north. Found something! Rodef rolled his eyes at himself. Um, yeah, I guess he can roll his eyes at himself. It's a little... Um, still, the anger would not kindle. He put his arrow away. The false trail failed to entice the bounty hunters west. A shout rang from the north. Found something. Rodef rail rolled his eyes at himself. He stashed his haversack in the roots of a tawny tamarack in the north. Ooh. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm spelling. All right. Tamarack. Tamarack. Well, also, uh, replacing tamarack hall is currently building the IU. Why is that there? Tamarack. But there's only two ratings? Tamarack. Yeah. All right, let's hear this one. Fucking Emma saying. Tamarack. All right. Yeah, it's not one that I... Uh, slightly surprised that I know what a Tamarack... I actually don't know what a Tamarack is. Tamarack. I think I got a list of, um, yeah. Oh, lyrics, yeah. Um, the first forest tree to grow on filled lake bogs uh, in lake states. Yeah, yeah. so lyrics, Laracina, uh, which is a larch, right? Okay. Yeah, look at these guys. Looking good. All right. 
Uh, trees are especially pretty today. It's a very beautiful day in the morning. Isn't it? Um, and they do get tawny. As you can see, I, I was probably, when I said tawny tamarack, I was probably looking at this um, thing here. Uh, and they, they, oh, you know what I was looking for? The way that I came to tamarack is I was looking for um, a tree which had raised roots that was still, uh, would fit within like the boreal landscape here. So it needed a tree where you could tuck something into, it, like, it's like um, the roots there. You know, like a like a mangrove has those crazy roots. They're not quite the same, but at least you can you can hide something among the roots of a tamarack or larch. Okay, uh, do we need the word tawny there? Rodef rolled his eyes at himself. He'd stashed his haversack in the roots of a tawny tamarack in the north. It was well off the trail, but Went was getting better, or Rodef was wearing down. It had to happen eventually. All right, so I don't like Lupine Valley here. Uh, Tawny ramps up the alliteration. I like it for your purpose. Yeah, it's just it's just whether it knocks the reader out of the story there. But Let's call it Howl Valley. Rodef spat with regret. Now he had to kill them. And then we can't have another uh, uh, could not find the will because we did a few. All right, so cool. One more trick. Then I can start to pick them off, Rodef promised himself. I'm not, I'm not jazzed on the interspersing of Rodef and Three Wolf. I think it's something that, um, yeah, I don't, I don't like the the two names that are so disparate. But like otherwise, it's like Rodef, 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 or Three Wolf, Three Wolf, Three Wolf, Three Wolf. One more trick, then I can start to pick them off, Rodef promised himself. He opened himself to the sullen gray sky, the mournful wind, the whispered roar of the forest. A thousand, 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 no, we can't have three thousands. <laughs> A thousand, thousand things tied together to make this land. Rodef Semilat was what one shivering strand of that great web. A fat squirrel huddled in a knot hole below, paranoid. Okay, I like that there. So, okay, so let's look at um, this one more trick. Okay, cool. I think that is a... Uh... And then he needs to come after them. And I don't like... So Promised is... Um... Then I have to end it. Um, so I think that's a very good comment there, um, because definitely we don't want him to seem eager to murk these dudes, um, ever. 
Um, let's look for worried or concerned. No, concerned is not right there. Um, let's see. But let's, let's try a different verb, though. It had to happen eventually. Now the hunters reoriented north towards Howe Valley. I like Howe Valley. He spat with regret. Now he had to kill them. One more trick. Okay, I like that a little bit better. Um, not I have to end it, but I will end it. One more trick, then I'll end it. Okay, cool. So he is resolved at this point. Like if this next trick doesn't work out, he's going to try and uh, murk these dudes. They're, they're headed towards Hal Valley uh, by the name of, I, I think Lupine Valley was stupid, but I like Hal Valley. Um, so you get the idea that that's where all his wolves are at, that they have been um, uh, in this dance. Um, in his mind, this is not a dance, right? He is disgusted with himself. Um, uh, then I'll end it. Uh, then I'll end this nonsense. Um, uh, like folly wouldn't work there. <laughs> what if he just said? Then, the end. Oh, I like that, kind of. <laughs> One more trick. Then, the end, Rhoda promised himself. I like that, too, because there's, like, a level of meta um, there for the reader, who is, like, looking at the number of pages and, like, man, they better wrap this shit up soon. Because um, we are... We only have 24 pages remaining. So, uh, we're you know, we're better than halfway here. All right, I like this. Um... One more trick, then the end. Wrote it. All right, so I'm going to give Bradius yet another there. So I like that a little bit better. I, I, I like the language being ambiguous there. I don't want to go into like dance, which is like a little too um, 80s villainy. Um, he opened himself to the sullen gray sky. And the whispered wind, uh, he opened himself to the sullen gray sky, the mournful wind, and the whispered roar of the forest. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, dancing around the fact that he should just kill them now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so actually Milkness should get a point there too uh, for reinforcing that and helping me to figure out what to do with it. Cool. With three deep breaths, he opened himself to the sullen gray sky, the mournful wind, and the whispered roar of the forest. A thousand, thousand things tied together to make this land. Rodef Semelot was what... was only one shivering strand of that great web a fat squirrel huddled in the knot held A fat squirrel huddled in the knot hole below and worried Rodef might be after his acorn cash. An unconcerned crowned eagle watched him from her airy, fluffed above her three precious eggs. Mated foxen ranged through the hollybriar and chittered at the unfamiliar scent of men. A pregnant bear rode the olden wing. A pregnant bear rode the olden wheel of dreams in her den, already deep in hibernation. None of these beasts would drive away seven men who were determined to die. A favor, Rodef willed. Not hold below and worried. Uh, let's see. And we can take out the end. Okay, um, those are two closely related clauses. If we take out the end there, does that have to become a semicolon? 
Um, so we don't have a direct object, so it's not an independent clause because we don't because the object is implied, right? So Fat Squirrel huddled in the knot hole below, worried Rodef might be after his acorn cash. <laughs> I do like that. Is worried about okay, cool. Yeah, I think we can get away with taking out and an unconcerned Crown Eagle watched. An unconcerned crown eagle watched from her airy, fluffed above her three precious eggs. Mated foxen ra ranged through the hollybriar and chittered at the unfamiliar scent of men. The clause is dependent. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, so we're changing up uh, this here so that we have some internal rhyming. Um, Mated foxen ranged through the hollybriar and chittered at the unfamiliar scent of men. In her den, a pregnant bear rode the olden wheel of dreams deep in hibernation. None of these beasts would drive away seven men who were determined to die. A favor, Rodef willed. He reached into his pouch and produced a skip... Uh, Uh, I don't like end produced. It's like it's like it's a fucking magic trick. Um, I would lose the argument about foxen, so I feel I won't make it. Um, I mean, no, mated foxen is like kind of, we don't really need that. Wait, would it be a mated pair of fox is uh, the plural of foxes? Word for multiple fox. Skulk of foxes. Oh, <laughs> it's a skulk. A leash, a lead. All right, so foxes. I think we have a fox earlier. Um, I don't think porcupines... Uh, Go high enough. Uh, we could. Mm, so we do foxes. We do one fox, the like vespertine um, vixen thing earlier. All right. So good night, Bradius. Thank you for um, your heroic efforts. I'm going to give you one last point for there. We are definitely only getting through one chapter today. I'm just putting that out there. Um, I wonder if we could change this up to a different. We can't do wolverines because they're too ornery. Mm. 
No, I like I like them being alarmed at the unfamiliar scent of men. Okay, cool. A mated pair of foxes. Let's, let's have them be mated. Why not? Okay. Uh, foxes only pair up if they're mated. That is not true. Um, yeah, they they are they're they're like dogs where sometimes they will just hang out together and so forth. Though they're largely um, solitary, they they will sometimes hang. But it's irregular, so might as well. A favor, Rodef willed. He pulled a strip of kippered venison meant for lunch from his pouch. High in the airy, a regal crown of golden feathers peaked with interest. Food was crucial, but the queen was loath to leave her eggs. Okay, did we get rid of the other loath? Um... Let's see. Yeah, we did get rid of... Uh, okay, good. That means we get to keep her loath to leave her eggs. Food was crucial, but the queen was loath to leave her eggs unguarded. Only for a moment. One quick wing over. Don't fly too low. They may shoot. The haughty harrier scoffed at the notion... Okay, cool. Let's just have her um, scoff. Wait, really? What are we doing now? Yes, really, sometimes. Um, any, well, it's, it's tough to say because um, most of what I'm basing that on is um, uh, just seeing two of them together and like thinking that they were both dudes. But a anyhow, like, let me, let me get through the fucking chapter. <laughs> I could be wrong. All right. Yeah. Uh, now I gotta know. Initially, uh, they tend to live in pairs or small family groups, dominant male, dominant female. Da, da, da. Foxes hunt alone and live as pairs in, or in small family groups. Um, a pair, a family group may uh, unmated females, kids, class, kill mates. Uh, don't associate with not breeding or raising kits. When do they breed? Structural and temporal stability of red fox. Highly flexible social system. Uh, okay, yeah, so it may just be like a uh, red versus gray fox thing. There, hold on, let's go to... Significant preferred, kind of specific. Long term relationships with other territory, average longevity of relationships varied seasonally. Social connectivity, different social groups is influenced by their annual life cycle. The probability of reassociating after a given lifetime lag, last in spring and summer, during cub birth, blah, blah. Uh, 33% of fox relationships last for four consecutive seasons between temporary residents for 20 days, between residents and visitors from adjacent territories. The majority lasted less than one day, uh, particularly during dispersal and mating, and probably foxes from non-adjacent social groups. Um, 
in one group, the death of the dominant male caused significant social disruption for two seasons. Damn. Okay, well, now we know. Red foxes are whores. Um, okay. The haughty harrier scoffed at the thought such lowly creatures could reach her. As the eagle took wind, Rodef peered out through her eyes. It hurt at first. It hurt, as if his own eyes had swollen in his skull to the size of fists. The world unfolded. Her peripheral vision was double his, and her acute... Oh, I like this. The world unfolded forcefully, comma. Her peripheral vision was double his, and her acuity was obscene. The eagle could see the individual needles of pines, the trembling whiskers of a vole, or the trembling whispers of a vole a thousand paces away. She found a thermal and soared. The treetops fell away. She found a thermal and soared. The treetops fell away and Rodef's breath caught. It was all so small to the queen of the sky. Her scream rang against the... Her scream... Uh, yeah, cry. Her cry rang across the forest. calling out to her mate. All that she could see was hers. No lesser raptor would dare impinge on a... Oh. No lesser raptor would dare impinge upon a crown eagle's territory. Even crag condors and great snow... At Even crag condors and great snowy owls kept their own counsel while the queen and her mate were awake. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Yep. With ease, the queen found the bumbling train of men. With ease, the queen found the bumbling train of bounty hunters. They were northbound now, headed into wolf country. Rodef felt a strab of regret. Others might suffer for his ill-conceived leniency. His friends might suffer for his ill-conceived leniency. A little further out, Rodef urged. The eagle obliged, feeling smug from the human awe that bled across their bond. How small his world was. How heartbreaking to soar upon her wings, to gaze through her incomparable eyes. What a sorry lot to be chained to the land all his life. Buoyed by admiration, the Queen Eagle flew a wider circuit. The bounty hunters were headed downhill towards White Bite Run. In any other season, Rodef might have relied on the alabaster adders to bite at least one of the intruders. This late in the year, the serpents were asleep in their burrows, curled around clutches of opalescent eggs. Even the swift running river was frozen over. The bounty hunter... Uh, there we go. Uh, I thought Three Wolf wasn't human. He is not human. Um, do we mention that he's human there? Let's see. I mean, he's not... Uh... 
Mm, yeah, that's a good point. Um... <laughs> Let's do bipedal. <laughs> Feeling smug from the bipedal awe that bled across their bond. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no Nobody can stop me from doing that. Oh. <laughs> so bad. Oh. So we get a little alliteration there. Bipedal awe that bled across their bond. Um, and he is a he is a biped, right? We could we could use um if we want to be less gay, we could also use landbound awe. Um but we, we say that he's chained to the land all his life. I think bipedal is fine. Even the swift running river was frozen over. The bounty hunters would be on thin ice as they crossed. Rodef could beat them there and start shooting once they were mid-river. He could pick them to pieces. It would waste all his pains to spare them, but they were too close to home. I tried, Lil, Rodef whispered. The words meant nothing to the raptor, but she could appreciate his regret. For an odd moment, Three Wolf was the rare recipient of an eagle's empathy. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. You may return. Rodef urged, feeling concern for her eggs loom large. As she banked back, her sharp eyes softed. Uh, ooh, all right, let's, uh, let's, um, I'm going too fast now. I tried, Lil, Rodef whispered. I tried, Lil, Rodef muttered. The words meant nothing to the raptor, but she could appreciate his regret. For an odd moment, he was the rare recipient of an eagle's empathy. You may return, Rodef urged. Okay, so looming large means it's already there. He could feel concern for her eggs welling. As she banked back, her sharp dot... As the eagle banked back, her sharp eyes spotted a shift in the woods north of White Bite Run. A great disturbance rustled through the dense firs and shook the bare branches of denuded poplars. What luck. It was Rodef's first time seeing the phenomenon from above, but he instantly knew what it was. Another chance. The eagle dropped in a heart-stopping dive and swooped, be and swooped beside him. She perched fear... I, I like that she perches fearlessly, but it's too much. The golden... All right. The eagle dropped in a heart-stopping dive and swooped to perch beside him. The golden feathers of her crown pointed high with pride. Thank you, Rodef beamed. He surrendered his lunch and, on second thought, handed over his dinner as well. She... Okay. 
I should have resplendent. Uh, let's take a look. The eagle took her prize in her beak and flew back to her eyrie. All right, I, I like I like it better if she just snatches uh, the jerky. <sighs> it is a good spot where we could use resplendent, but it doesn't um, it doesn't fit into like the internal rhyme or whatever anywhere. Uh, like perch beside him, jerked meat. <laughs> she snatched the venison from his hand and winged back to her airy. Rodef would go hungry, but the queen of the sky surely deserved a reward. It was a cold year to raise three eggs. Mm. Okay, uh, so we only got through one chapter, which is whack. Um, yeah, that's, what did we start at? I think we got nine pages today. Oh no, not even nine pages. This is, this is a crawl. This was five pages that it took, <laughs> it was like four hours. When did we start this nonsense? Now let's go all the way up. Uh, we started at uh, 7.16, and it is now 9.30, so 2, 2.5 pages an hour. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, here, um, here, like, we, we have, like, another chapter where one three wolf is giving us, us an external look at what the, the bounty hunters look like to everybody else. Um, and we start to see some pangs of consciousness from, or pangs of conscience from him. And we see more instances where he is attuned with like the nature of this place. Um, where I like that also that the animals stay wild, right? Like the, here we change it up so that the eagle is like, they can't hurt me. Um, and that she's haughty and, um, that, um, she doesn't graciously accept that she snatches it right out of his hand. Um, uh, let's see, she should almost like maybe come near taking off one of his fingers. Yeah. But still they work together. Um, like, I like that he has to deal with these guys. Now, the eagle snatched the venison from his hand and winged back to her area. Okay, I like that a little better. Yeah, I like, I mean, it's meant to be um, a very animal-centric story. One of the things that I worry about a little in this story is even though we call it Three Wolf and there's a big focus on wolves, you see wolves in this story for like two sentences, right? Um, so that's... Uh, yeah, I like I like also that we've given different personalities to a lot of these. Like the eagle is just like boss bitch, um, and the crows are just super like <laughs> like ready to go at it and so forth. And um, the foxes are super wary in this, um, where uh, they could be whatever. Okay, so I like this one. All right, let's take a look at what awaits us tomorrow. Um, also, let's 
remove the superfluous page, which is what happens when you don't do the, the page breaks. Okay. Uh, there's a cold deer to raise three eggs. I like I like two. That I don't like that you use queens so much though. Well, that that would have been great to hear at the start of the fucking chapter. Um, I think you're probably right. Now, let's see if we can fix that. Mm, let's see. Well, they're crown eagles. Um, so this is why. I think we use queen twice. Okay, so queen of the sky there. Let's just make sure that there are only like two instances. Uh, here, here. I think I saw another queen in there somewhere. Queen of the sky there. Yep. One. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. We just need to um, take out the intervening queens that aren't doing any work. Cool. Yeah, there are a bunch of queens in there. Yeah, cool. Cool. Okay, cool. So I think cutting two of those were good. All right, so in our next chapter, what's going to happen? Um, this is going to be chapter eight. Uh, and it looks like it starts with a pastoral, so we're not going to read through it. Um, so cool. We finished the chapter even though I was tired as fuck and did not want to do any such thing. All right, so thank you, Milkness, for bearing with me through this, <laughs> the last one standing. Everybody else has wandered off to get coffee and so forth. All right, I hope you have a good uh, three off or whatever you do over there in Kiwi Land, and uh, that um, you are not mobbed down by invasive wombats or whatever is going on over there. All right, we did it. I'm out. <laughs>